Now, one of the biggest problem that a new user to Linux faces is choosing the right Linux distro for him from thousands of available distro out there. Now, your choice also matters a lot because if you choose the wrong distro, especially at the beginning, you may end up disliking the entire Linux platform and miss the opportunity to be a part of this awesome world of Linux. So what's up, everybody? Welcome to XPS Tech. I am Vineet and in today's video, I'll talk about my list of top 5 best Linux desktop distro that a beginner to Linux should use. Now before I go any further, I want to mention here that your choices may differ from my list. That is absolutely fine. If you think that some other distro should be a part of this list, kindly mention that in the comment below so that the viewer of this video can benefit. Alright, so with that said, let's begin today's video. Alright, so let's start with number 5. At number 5, we have a Linux distro that strives to be cutting edge, incorporating all the latest technology as soon as they are released. Yes, we are talking about Fedora OS. This distro is from United States and it was started in 2003. Although it is a community driven project, but it is owned and sponsored by Red Hat, which is well known for its enterprise solutions, including an enterprise Linux distro called Red Hat Enterprise Linux or RHEL in short. In fact, Fedora is considered as a testing distro for all the features that will eventually go into RHEL. Now let's talk about Fedora releases. Fedora 1, the first edition of this distro, was released on 5th of November. November 2003. A new version is released after every six months and a particular version is supported for approximately 13 months. So there is no long term support or LTA support here. Fedora follows a fixed release model and the current version of Fedora is Fedora 23 which was released on 3rd of November 2015. Fedora is released in three editions, workstation, server and cloud. It supports both 32-bit and 64-bit systems with the following image size. Now Fedora also have six spins, including the popular KDE, XFC, LXD, Cinnamon spins. As far as the installation goes, you have the Anaconda installer, which is different from most Linux installer. Frankly, it's not the easiest to configure, but you have to give yourself some time and you'll be just fine. Now default package manager for GUI, you have the package kit and the command line is the popular YAM or RPM. Fedora has over 20,000 packages, so quite a decent amount of packages and the minimum system requirement for installing Fedora, you need a processor of minimum 1 gigahertz, you need a RAM of 1 GB and you need a hard disk space of at least 10 GB. Now to summarize all this, Fedora OS is for those who wants an up-to-date Linux distro with all the latest technologies and features and doesn't mind if it is little unstable or doesn't mind switching to a new release after every six months or a year. Alright, so that was Fedora OS at number five. Alright, at number four, we have a distro with a long history and frankly, it has seen a lot in its 22 years long journey and yet stood up to the test of the times and emerged as a Linux distro that is rock solid and popular for its emphasis on a stable distro rather than rushing into incorporating new technology without proper testing. This is the Debian OS. In fact, in fact, this very feature of this distro sometimes goes against it for some people who criticize Debian for being too slow to incorporate new technology. Now, the first version of Debian, Debian 1.1, codename Buzz, was released on 17th of June 1996. Following a fixed release model, Debian gets one major release after every two years. And from last three years, it is providing long-term support of five years for all its release. Now, the current version is Debian 8, which was released on 25th of April 2015. Now, it supports both 32-bit and 64-bit machines and the installer image comes in several DVDs. However, DVD number one, the first DVD, is sufficient to get the base system installed on your machine. Installation of the OS is quite simple with the Debian installer, which is extremely easy to understand. As far as the package manager is concerned, it has Synaptic as a GUI package manager and it has the apt package manager for command line package installation. Now Debian has over 50,000 packages in its repository and it is probably the largest collection of software packages that any Linux distro has. 
Now the minimum system requirement that you need to install Debian on your system, you require a processor of 1 gigahertz, a uh, RAM of 128 MB and a hard disk space of 5 GB. Now if you're interested to know more about Debian OS, I have also made a video covering everything you need to know about Debian OS. You can check out the video by clicking on this link. Alright, my final word on Debian. Now install Debian if stability is your number one priority and you're okay with using slightly old outdated technology. All right, so now we have come to number three. At number three, we have a Linux distro from Germany, which goes by its tagline, the maker's choice for sysadmins, developers, and desktop users. We are talking about OpenSUSE. Now this distribution is sponsored by SUSE Linux, which also builds enterprise Linux distro called SUSE Linux Enterprise, and kind of has similar relationship that Fedora and Red Hat has. This OS is around a decade old with its first release as SUSE Linux 10.0 released on 6th of October 2005. Now from the third release onwards that is from 7th of December 2006 SUSE Linux was renamed as OpenSUSE. Now as far as its releases are concerned there have been new changes that have been introduced recently to its release policies. Now you have two versions of this distro. One is called OpenSUSE Leap. The current version is 42.1 which was released on 4th of November 2015 and it follows a fixed release model. The other one is OpenSUSE Tumbleweed which is a pure rolling release version. So your system is updated as and when a new package gets updated. The installation image size for both these versions are as follows. Now the installation of OpenSUSE is done by its custom installer. Now as far as the package manager is concerned OpenSUSE has one of the best Linux package manager which is called YAST uh, which is short form of yet another setup tool. Now it is very popular as an all-in-one management tool. The command line package manager is called Zipper. OpenSUSE has over 20,000 packages right now in its repository. The minimum system requirement that you need to have to get OpenSUSE installed on your computer is you require a processor of 1.7 GHz, a RAM of 1 GB and a hard disk space of minimum 3 GB. Now again to summarize in one word, OpenSUSE is a decent distro for desktop user with great all-in-one management, management tool called YAST which can make your Linux experience very pleasant. Alright, the second spot goes to the distribution which has a name that means humanity to others in English. It is the Ubuntu Linux from Isle of Man. It is probably the most popular Linux distribution out there. It is so popular that the name Ubuntu has almost become synonymous to Linux. Now, this distro is developed by a UK based company called Canonical which is owned by Mark Shuttleworth. It is actually a derivative of Debian Linux. Now the first version was Ubuntu 4.10 which was released on 20th of October 2004. For those who are wondering with the naming system, the first being 4.10 but in Ubuntu naming system, the number before the dot denotes the year of its release and the number after the dot denotes the month. Following a fixed release model, a new version of Ubuntu is released after every six months and every fourth version is a long time support version or a LTS version with five years of support. Now Ubuntu is released not only for desktop systems but also for server, cloud and touch devices such as mobile phones and tablets. Now perhaps the most controversial decision taken by Ubuntu was when it shifted from the GNOME desktop environment to Unity desktop environment in 2010, which was highly criticized by the community. Also the introduction of a new feature in Ubuntu 12.10 called Shopping Lens, which sent user searches indirectly to Amazon.com and based on the user searches, the result was shown from Amazon. If a user bought something, Canonical received a small commission on the sale. So it has its fair bit of controversies. Now, as far as the package managers are concerned, you have Ubuntu Software Center as GUI package manager and you also have apt as command line tool for installing packages. Ubuntu has over 34,000 packages in its repository, which is quite a big number. And it supports both 32-bit and 64-bit machines. And the size of installation images are as follows. 
Now the minimum system requirement for Ubuntu is it requires a processor of 1 gigahertz, a RAM of 768 megabytes and a hard disk space of 5 GB. To summarize this distro, it is very very popular distro for desktops but off late it has been criticized for introducing changes which is less community friendly and more business oriented. At the top of the list we have a distribution that claims to be the third most widely used operating system after Microsoft Windows and Apple's Mac OS X. I'm talking about Linux Mint. Now this distribution comes from Ireland and in my opinion the best Linux distro that you can have for a desktop or a laptop. It is ranked number one in the page hit ranking at distrowatch.com and one of the main reason for its popularity is its out of the box support to media codec, flash and popular hardware devices like printers and wireless devices. Now it was started in 2006 with its first release Linux Mint 1.0 codename ADA. Now the distribution is based on Ubuntu and uses Ubuntu's package repositories and code base. A new version of the OS is released approximately one month after Ubuntu release and every fourth release used to be a long term support but after version 17 it was announced that all new versions will have a long term support of five years and it will no longer follow the release cycle of Ubuntu. Now the latest version is Linux Mint 17.2 codename Rafaela. The operating system is released with Cinnamon or Mate as its primary desktop environment and both the version also have a no codec release which is Linux Mint without proprietary packages. You also have KDE and XFCE releases of Linux Mint. Linux Mint gathered popularity after Ubuntu shifted to Unity inter interface which was disliked by many users. Linux Mint stuck to the traditional GNOME interface and created its own desktop environment called Mate which is simple yet elegant which is also often considered as the successor to GNOME 2. Now it is also praised for its emphasis on listening to the community. Now as far as the package manager is concerned it has synaptic package manager for GUI interface and apt package manager for command line installation of packages. Now it has over 30,000 packages in its repository and it follows a fixed release model. Now the minimum system requirement that you need to install Linux Mint on your computer is you need a processor of 700 megahertz, a RAM of 512 megabyte and a hard disk space of 5 GB. Uh, my final word on Linux Mint is if you are a beginner to Linux, install this distro hands down and you'll not find yourself out of place using Linux. It's a great OS with all the features that you need on a desktop operating system with long term support of 5 years with every release. Alright so that was all for today. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video kindly press the like button if you have any comment or suggestion or if you differ or if you think that there is some other distribution that should be on this list kindly mention that in the comment section below. A huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech. Thank you guys for watching this and I'll see you next time.